welcome back dear students we are meeting in the next part of our online mooc course on migration and refugees in urban areas to do a very very quick recap we saw the meaning definitions of migration we saw some statistics we saw the two different major types of migration i took you through in detail about internal migration and i'm going to walk you through in detail through the international migration the movement of people across international borders for the purpose of settling is known as international migration so when people move from uh, one country to another the national boundaries it is called international migration international migrants relocate from one country to another looking for better opportunities or for any other varied reasons shorter stays in another country should not be classified as permanent migration in this united nations india has not always been affected by uh, in migration but historical events such as the partition of india which happened between 1957 to 51 buddhist migration from 1954 to 59 Bangladesh liberation in the year 1971 and Tamil migrants have all contributed to international migration in India so when i say tamil migrants i am talking about the sri lankan tamils indian out migration began during colonial times primarily after the end of the slave trade when a labor shortage prompted indian migration from states such as uttar pradesh and bihar to countries such as philippines and indonesia's java for plantation agriculture during that time there was also outward migration to sri lanka to work in the tea estates to uh, different pacific islands to work in their estates like fiji etc etc let's do a quick exercise now that we have wrapped up the two types of uh, uh, migration i would want you to draw a mind map of the internal migration as well as the international migration so that the points which we learned would be reinforced just take a minute to draw a quick mind map yes i hope you were able to visually put in paper what you learned okay in the beginning when we're looking at terms which we need need to know when we were studying about what migration is we saw these two words push factor and pull factor so what are these push factors the push factors are those factors that compels people to migrate they these are reasons for which people migrate from their place of birth or their native place or the source place of source of place of origin the reasons can be drought so when we saw the map we saw uh places which are prone to drought having being hot spots of migration like i said the ramanathapuram district we saw rajasthan marked in deep deep red gujarat so drought and flood calamities threat of life there is constant war there is constant problem some issue or the other poverty no job or high unemployment agriculture fails there is no proper yield there is no money to run the family war civil war conflict among people a example would be the sri lankan war because of which people left the country and they are refugees in india and many and in many other countries across the world terrorism poor living standard political instability very harsh climate extreme climates where people cannot live natural disaster i told you the incident of the gujarat earthquake in 2001 epidemics any particular disease which breaks out in a particular part and social and economic backwards of that particular area we are moving on to the pull factors factors which pull a person to a particular place or the destination place place of destination place of migration people are attracted by the pull factor to migrate voluntarily such as better economic opportunities better job opportunities 
better living conditions, peace and stability, we can live peacefully in this place here, peace and stability, security of life and property, pleasant climate, better life, better services such as better opportunities for education, communication and health services. So, these are the major push pull factors of migration. We are moving on to the next uh, 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 portion of the consequences of migration. What happens due to migration? Migration has multiple fold consequences. They have their own benefits as well as the problems. So, let us see what are the economic consequences. No, let us take for example, in Kerala, if you go and see state of Kerala is well developed infrastructurally. So, there are a lot of uh, nice good roads, beautiful houses and where does all this money come from? Relatives are working in the Gulf countries, remittance, money is sent, earned there and sent here. So, money is being used here, remittances which come from other country. Remittances from international migrants are one of the major sources of foreign exchange for a country. What are the demographic consequences? Migration leads to the redistribution of population within a country. Mumbai is a very thickly populated place. Chennai is a thickly populated place. Kolkata is a thickly populated place. There are places which are which become very sparsely populated because they move from there to Mumbai or Kolkata or Delhi. Rural urban migration is one of the important factors contributing to the population growth of cities age and skill selective out migration. So, we saw that it is the 20 to 64 in that age group people move out. So, that is a very productive period. So, age selective out migration, elders do not move out much, people within this age group move out, age and skill, people with particular skill sets move out to work in a particular industry, out migration from the rural area have an adverse effect on the rural demographic structure. Only elders are living in a particular block, all the young productive people, uh, human resource has moved out of that particular block or that a particular town or that particular village. Only children are there, uh, parents who migrate leave the small children under the care of the elders, their parents at home in the rural area. So, it also disrupts the structure in the rural area. The next consequence is the social consequence, when migrants go back to their native place, they go back with a lot of good ideas like education of girl child, no early marriage for girl child and there is a change in the culture, the way they look at uh, uh, people, their ideas, their thoughts. So, there is social consequence also and there is also environmental consequence in the in or the destination mig place of migration. For example, lots of buildings, lots of pollution rivers are polluted, so uh, trees are being cut down, so there are environmental consequences also because of overcrowding of the in migration places. Now, what are the challenges faced by migrant workers? I happen to do my PhD research work among the migrant women construction workers and migrants who move out of their native places or the source places always land up in the unorganized sector or the informal sector. We will see them working many a times in construction industry. So, we see especially in Tamil Nadu, I am in talking in case of Tamil Nadu, we see a lot of North Indian migrants especially from Bihar, Odisha, Rajasthan working here in Chennai in infrastructural development projects. So, they work in the informal economy. What do I mean by informal or the unorganized sector? There is e easy entry and exit into the workforce. There is no trade union to fight for the cause of these people and uh, there is no proper documentation of these people working there in that particular site. So, unorganized sector. So, many, many of them land in the informal economy. There is issue of identification documents they do not have a ration card or the public distribution system identity card, they do not have a Aadhaar card. So, they do not have any identification documents, they do not have proper housing facilities. 
if you see they will be sleeping in the construction sites, they will be living in the construction sites, cooking there and eating there itself or they stay in the steel sheds, uh, they build steel sheds, shabby quarters, there are not any toilets, water from the houses just like that run into the small passages which are there between the uh, tin or steel houses which are there. They do not have proper financial access, they do not have proper proof of residence for them to start a bank account. If they need money, they go to the local uh, money lenders who literally cheat them with their interests. They do not have access, proper access to healthcare facilities also. In fact, they do not know to communicate what is the physical ailment they are undergoing or even if they have a brick falling on their foot, proper treatment is not given, they just tie a cloth or a net, whatever is lying down at the construction site. Education of children, if in case for example, there are migrants moving out from Andhra coming to Tamil Nadu or from Bihar to Tamil Nadu and by chance they are bringing their children along with them, the mother tongue is different, they will not be able to study in a school in uh, Tamil Nadu. So, the problem of education for children is also there. Social exclusion, when I say social exclusion, people are excluded, the migrants are excluded, they are looked down upon, they are discriminated. Very recently also, two days back or something like that on the newspaper, uh, there was an incident of a Bihari migrant being beaten to death because he was in an inebriated state and entered a particular uh, apartment. So, they are socially excluded, they are also politically excluded, they do not have the right to vote where in the place where they are because they do not have their proper do documents. So, these are some of the challenges faced by the migrant workers and moving on to what are the steps taken by the government for migrants welfare. The government came up with the Interstate Migrant Workmen Regulation of Employment and Conditions of Service Act in 1979, but unfortunately how much it is being implemented is a big question mark because agents who bring them are supposed to give them an identity card, they do not get any. There are lots of challenges in the implementation of this particular act. The government also wanted to retain these people who are moving out of the uh, rural areas, so they brought in a lot of en enhancing livelihood opportunities for the rural population like the Deena Dayal, Antyodhya, Yojana, National Rural Livelihoods Mission. Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, attracting and retaining of youth in agriculture. Please go through all these policies for you to understand better, especially the MGNREGA, the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Now, we are going almost towards the end and I am going to differentiate migrants, refugees, IDPs and asylum seekers. Now, we all this while we were seeing who a migrant is, a migrant is a person who moves from one place to another not due to direct threat or persecution, but due to improving their lives or livelihood. Migrants can return home if they wish, but whereas refugees and asylum seekers will find it very difficult to return to their own land. Now, we are coming into the case of the IDP or the internally displaced persons they are also known as the IDPs. These are people who are moved out or forced or are obliged to move out of a particular place because a infrastructural development activity or a project is going to happen there. A simple example would be the people of Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra who, who were moved out because of the dams across along the Narmada river and there arose the Narmada Bachao Andolan. So, pe people are moved out, they are forcefully asked to move and they will have to oblige to the government so that there is a developmental activity which is ha happening there. A lot of dams, big, medium and small were built alongside the Narmada river, especially the Sar Sardar Sarovar dam. So, uh, people had to move leaving back their livelihood options, their employment opportunities and go to new places. So, these people are called the IDPs or the internally displaced persons. 
there are lot of violations of human rights which happens because of this moving on to who a refugee is i already couple of times during the session i mentioned about the refugee refugee are persons who fled their country due to the risk of serious human rights violations and persecution there just draw the parallel with the recent rohingya uh, refugees we uh, draw the line uh, parallel with the sri lankan refugees very recently when the economic crisis shot up again we are seeing a large influx of uh, uh, refugees from sri lanka entering through the coastal districts of rameshwaram so there is a threat for life and they leave they come asking for refuge in a foreign country these refugees have a right to international protection under the un refugee convention and its protocol the last type is the asylum seekers a person who claims to be a refugee but whose claim hasn't been evaluated is asking for asylum to come into this new land an asylum seeker will turn into a refugee if the claim is evaluated and justified this is a government procedure when i say evaluated and justify a asylum seeker will become a refugee refugee status determination is a legal process used by governments or un hcr to determine the refugee status of an asylum seeker under international national or regional law let's look at uh, the various refugees in india since its independent independence india has had a lot of refugees at different points of time earlier i told you about the partition refugees from pakistan in 1947 we had the tibetan refugees that arrived in 1959 the chakma and hajong from present day bangladesh in the early 1960s other bangladeshi refugees in 1965 and 1971 sri lankan tamil refugees from the 1980s most recent, recently the rohingya refugees from myanmar that is in 2022 what are the problems faced by the refugees refugees are not treated well by the local residents of the place they are discriminated they are looked down upon they are considered as a burden on the local economy the local residents feel that refugees are snatching their job opportunities in that particular area because they are ready to work for lower wages the refugees are held responsible for spreading diseases crime and polluting the areas as they mostly live in slums and tents they are constrained to do useful and necessary work but at very low wages they are paid very low refugees face the problem of shelter food and lack of employment they do not have proper um, facility to stay they again like migrants live in squatters tin or aluminium or tent squatters in refugee camps refugees are exempted from the rights that are given by the state to its people like enjoying the right of minimum standard of living and security so they lack basic facilities the government does not provide it they are often exploited by the police and the other local residents on grounds of the right that they lack as member of that state they don't belong to that particular state they are just refugees with this we have come to the end of the a uh, mooc online course on migration and refugees a very quick recap of both the parts part a and part b in part a and we saw the concept meaning definitions some facts and figures on migration and the two broad classifications of migration we dwelt well on the internal migrants and the different types of internal migrants we then moved on to part b of the session on migration and refugees we started seeing who a international migrant is we moved on to see the push and full pull factors we also saw the difference between a migrant a internally displaced person a refugee and a asylum seeker we saw the consequences of migration we saw the problems faced by migrants and at last the problems faced by the refugees 
Okay, let's do a very quick activity. Take a paper and a pen and let's see how much you have understood push and pull factor. Just draw or pictorially represent the push and pull factors of migration. Yes, students, we are almost here at the end of the uh, online course. Let's do a quick check. Differentiate migrants and refugees. Who is a migrant? Who is a refugee? Yes. Second, differentiate between a migrant and an IDP. A migrant and an IDP. Good. Next, try differentiating a refugee and an asylum seeker. A refugee and an asylum seeker. Good. I hope you all have all got it right. I hope you had a wonderful learning exposure experience in this session. All the best. Thank you.